close your eyes to racial differences and welcome all with the light of oneness. Those are the words of Baha'u'llah, the founder of the Baha'i faith, who has told us that we are all members of the same family or race. The human race. And it is this topic of the equality of races or the unity of all races that we are going to be discussing today with our special guest, Sylvester Scott, who is an account executive with AT&T, whose professional career has taken him through high school teaching, newscasting, sales, and marketing. And with Jody King Arsenault, who is the founder and director of a beautiful, humane organization called Pet Finders, which aids abandoned older pets and senior citizens by putting the two together. I'm John Cavillan. And I'm Sharon Monka, and we welcome you to the Spiritual Revolution. And welcome, Jody and Sylvester. Well, thank, thank you. you. We all know what war and disunity um, and racial prejudice has done to the family of man, death of millions, um, incredible devastation and destruction, Jody. What causes this prejudice? I think uh, probably the greatest reason for disunity and <laughs> afraid of things they don't understand. learn that the beauties of humanity are the differences, but that we are all from the same source, we're all one human family. In fact, it kind of takes a load off of everybody if we do realize that there is one human family. If we don't believe that, it doesn't make it any less so. It seems like everyone finds such comfort in finding uh, differences and then sort of staying well, I'm I have blue hair, therefore I'm going to stay with people that have blue hair, and eventually they'd find themselves quite alone. Well, we count ourselves into believing that blue hair is better. Right. Let's see, right. It puffs up our egos a little bit, and then we think we have a false sense of handling things better because we're better. We're, we're uh, Sylvester, I wonder, what would it take, do you think, to overcome what seems to be an ingrained tradition of prejudice? There has to be a higher commitment to uh, something the essential uh, standard of authority that everyone recognizes uh, and who would abide by the teachings uh, of that central authority. Uh, I think that if people try to do it for the sake of self, you know, it's a good idea, therefore I think that I'll like my neighbor. Uh, I think that that's a difficult thing to do. And it appears that throughout history, the history of mankind, the highest motivating factor uh, that's been present in, the, in, in mankind as far as mankind's ability to change his behavior has been religion. And I think that turning to religion, you know, religion in the truest sense of the word, mm -hmm. will provide that basis of education and that central uh, standard of authority that people will recognize and therefore abide by. Isn't it ironic, teaching. though, that religion has become a source of disunity itself? It uh, seems people have gotten mm -hmm. away from the pure essence of it. Yeah, people have gotten away from the essence of it, and um, People identify things with religion, and I think that they're identifying with the name of religion rather than religion in the purest sense of the word. Uh, religion itself has, has, has been transformed over a period of time. It has lost the, uh, the purity of its pristine teachings, and people have, it has evolved and it has uh, been varied uh, by the followers of the faith. Mm -hmm. And I think that we have to make a separation between religion and what the followers, supposedly followers of the faith, mm. do. What does Baha'u'llah say, Jody, about prejudice and, and racial equality? Well, he has called for the abolishment of all prejudice of all kinds. Uh, I think we are all aware of the big prejudices, the biggies, the racial prejudice, the economic prejudice, uh, national prejudice is very strong. It's just man's immaturity. We're just uh, getting our sea legs, as it were, spiritually. And in this time <clears throat> in history, uh, Baha'u'llah, being the teacher of man for this time in history, is addressing us as young adults. So we're beginning to think of things now as we did when we started to leave the nest. Mm -hmm. Remember when you left home? You started taking on new responsibilities. There was a lot of newness out there and certainly a lot of knowledge. All those um, narrow views that we've been given as children growing up were just accepted. We didn't question them too much because we lived such a sheltered existence. Well, interestingly, uh, as individuals and as a collective mankind, we're now stepping out into the world. We're all beginning to grow up. 
and so religion is giving us uh, adult rules to live by and things we have to do is start to examine some of these ridiculous prejudices that we've harbored for so long and stop them and understand them and work toward unity instead of division. This reminds me of one of the more important Baha'i principles that would be in tandem with this other principle of racial equality, and that's the independent investigation of truth. Exactly. If you are raised with that orientation, you won't simply accept a prejudice that's handed down in your family because that's the way it is, but you'll investigate anything on your own. But now we're talking about um, racial equality, and I'd like to ask you, Sylvester, what is what kind of validity is there to those individuals that feel that there is a superior race? And right now, it could be black or white or yellow or red. It doesn't really matter because it seems like there is a striving for some sort of an overcompensation, if you will, um, for equality. And sometimes that swings a little further in one direction. Mm -hmm. What is your feeling about this subject? As far as the validity of there being some superior race, there's no validity in it whatsoever. However, within the entire company of mankind, there is no such thing as equality, so to speak, because absolute equality would be the cause of disorder in the universe. Mm -hmm. And because all of us are created with inherent differences and capacities, uh, there's, you know, they're the generals and they're the soldiers, you know. Uh, people occupy all ranks and stations and positions within mankind, therefore everything gets done. And I think in terms of equality, there's an equality of opportunity, the, the right of self-expression uh, within the framework uh, of the law of God. And this is what we all should have the right and equality to, to uh, represent our thoughts, our thinking, to right to happiness and the right to opportunity. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about equal opportunities, equal rights, as opposed to innate equality. Someone may be a little more talented in walking a tightrope than someone who could ride a bicycle, etc. Exactly. So if we were to carry this to an extreme, um, we might say, okay, does Baha'u'llah talk about marriage? And does he talk about interracial marriage? He most certainly does. Um, uh, in fact, he says that when the black and the white begin to marry, then this will be an assurance of world peace. Uh, those, those are fighting words. <laughs> <laughs> Let's really be honest, is. they really are. It is, but um, and in fact, at the time that it was said, it was the most appalling thing that people had ever heard. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was a, it was really a new idea. And even today, even though it, it's not as new as it was, but yet still there's somewhat of a taboo and there's a newness to it and a resentment to the idea of racial intermarriage. But when you consider all the other species of animals upon the planet, that the selection process is not based on whether one is polka dot or one is a solid color or striped or otherwise. Uh, it is based on a natural selection process, you know, that has nothing to do with the most insignificant of all the things, and that's the outward appearance. As appalling as it seems, I know Jody mentioned earlier um, about uh, the, the concept, well, she wasn't really talking about, but the equality of men and women might have been as appalling in the time of Baha'u'llah as this is, what are your feelings on that? Well, uh, a maturity. Obviously, maturity. we must realize, Baha'u'llah gave this information as a matter of fact, that the soul has no gender. You know, we tend to think of That's ourselves terrific. always as males and females, and blacks and whites and olds and youngs and riches and poors and so on. We classify ourselves and then get angry when other people do it to us. <laughs> uh, I think that when we, when we view the world and we stop looking at the surface. In other words, when we view other people, we get to the surface and there stop and make evaluations that we deprive ourselves tremendously. Mm. Human beings are such fascinating creatures. We know that. We're human beings ourselves. And if we allow um, the, the surface look of people or hairdos or colors or any of these things interfere with getting into who is that human being. Mm -hmm. um, we just leave ourselves out in the cold. We're now, going to talk about the greater reality of man when we come back from this brief break. Please be, stay with us. Hi, I'm Alex Rocco. I'm a Baha'i. The Baha'is believe in the independent investigation of truth. That's why we have these simple gatherings called Firesides, where the Baha'is may share their principles with you. Please join us. We're sitting here with this beautiful basket of multicolored flowers, and it reminds me of Baha'u'llah's statement about the Rose Garden of Humanity. 
and the wonderful variety of color that God has provided on this planet that we must learn to appreciate rather than uh, despise. And I wonder, Jody, if you had any reactions to that. Oh, many. I love that quote by Baha'u'llah. You know, it's, it's such a lovely way to look at life when you can see the beauty of people by their individuality. Baha'u'llah says that from the moment we are conceived, the very instant of conception, one drop from the universal sea of consciousness is isolated for all time, mm -hmm. and that's your soul or your soul or mine. And if you've ever been to the ocean and you take a little scoop of water and you take another little scoop, they may look like the same, the same, but they're so different, and yet each has all the elements of the ocean within it. Mm -hmm. So we are dealt out uh, different capacities, different talents, different, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking Potential. for? Potentials. Potentials, exactly. And that's what gives us our beautiful differences inwardly mm -hmm. in our abilities to become uh, evolved as spiritual beings. Our outward physical appearance is um, all, all in the area of genes and so on, but way, way back, uh, climate is the cause of the skin tones. If you think about it, those of us who lived in hot places got dark skin to protect ourselves, and those who lived in the cool places uh, got the lighter skin. So what a silly reason to divide people mm -hmm. when uh, we can look with a spiritual eye, which uh, recognizing the teachings of a prophet like Baha'u'llah gives you an inner eye which opens up wide and suddenly you say, oh, wow, look how beautiful people are. Does one race, or example, the example of the uh, bouquet of flowers here, would one flower lose something if if um, they became united as they are in this in this arrangement, it's it's almost silly for people to think that they would people would be losing something if there would be intermarriages. What is Baha'u'llah's well teaching on this subject? You want to well, express yourself on that? Okay. You. Um, what can be lost? Um, there's absolutely the nothing you can only gain you know, through the well-being of uh, the other individuals. I think that now you know we're. People have been going off the philosophy for a long time, you know, uh, what's good for me is good for society as a whole. You know, if I do well, then society benefits. Uh, but it's, it's a different thing now. You know, what's good for the whole is good for the individual. And when you look at the, all the flowers and everyone representing an, an entity or a unity, a unit of potential, that mankind, when he deprives any part of that particular uh, picture of their particular right to, to be resourceful and to add uh, to that to the potential of mankind, then you're detracting, you're, you're uh, disallowing for half your resources, or more than half your resources, when you deny other people the right of uh, expression. It reminds me, uh, if a painter were to decide that he was going to paint a portrait of humanity but eliminate certain colors mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he wasn't fond of them, mm -hmm. he would not only be doing a disservice to the painting, but he would be expressing a um, color prejudice that is a limitation to himself. He but, is a loser, exactly. you know, as well as the expression, his work. Mm -hmm. And I think Baha'is believe that humanity likewise loses when any one race or people or culture are denied. Exactly. You take the world you know, as a whole. Uh, the world, if it's likened unto the body, uh, all the parts of the body you know, are, are essential in some way. And um, it's like, you know, would you sacrifice your eye for your ear? Uh, both of them are necessary. And when you consider the whole of mankind, I think it's time that people realize uh, that we have to view the body of man as being a body. But and that when any part of this body is injured, the whole body is hurt. Now, it's so, it sounds so wonderful as you're talking. You know, we, we all agree. But here we are out in the world, and if you, the two of you were to walk down the street and to go out in the evening, we're still in a in a world where that's not accepted and you're going to have some very strange glares and looks because people are going to say that's not right they're again thinking that one race is superior and you might be as affected by the prejudice because the the black women might feel that that's not right and then of course the white men and it's so crazy but the reality is that's where we are right now on the planet and it's as sad as it is real what do we do how do we talk to them how do we reach them the first place we start is with the children you see, you have to be taught prejudice. Prejudice is not automatic. You're not born thinking that anybody's better than anyone else. As a matter of fact, when the whole integration program got so crazy here in the Los Angeles area some time back, my little boy, who was very young at the time, came home with his 
black friend and said, Mom, what, what, is, what is black? He didn't mm -hmm. even know what they were talking about. And I was a little angry that they brought to his attention a difference in such a bad respect, in such a bad light. Mm -hmm. You see, I believe, and I believe Baha'u'llah wishes that we all understand that prejudice, that differences, that this division caused by thinking people are better if they're this way or better if they're that way is all imaginary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like territorial lines. They're invisible. Yes, from If you space. ever driven from one place to another and if there wasn't a sign there, you didn't know when you'd passed from one city to another or one country to another mm -hmm. unless there was some glaring uh, border patrol there to tell you, hey, you've just crossed a line. Oh, really? How <laughs> terrible. Well, we do that with people, and it's because we're taught that as little children. Uh, we pass on our bad habits so readily. If only we would learn to pass on our good habits. How do we go about changing that, even in the school system? Well, the school system can only do so much. You understand? We and have to do it at home. to reflect the nature of the parents, it seems to me. Well, it's, it's the educational process that happens through uh, familiarity or exposure to the Word of God. And we as Baha'is are taught that the most powerful influence upon the heart of mankind, which is the essence of mankind, mm -hmm. uh, is the creative Word of God. And that is that creative Word that is confined in the holy books, you know, that is the basis of all the major world religions. And whether it's uh, uh, the Quran, the Bible, uh, or the, the Baha'i teachings. Mm -hmm. And it is the, that exposure that has the ability to change the heart of man. Uh, for instance, Baha'u'llah says that to act like the beast of the field is unworthy of man. Those virtues that best befit his dignity are forbearance, mercy, and compassion, and loving kindness towards all the peoples and kindreds of the earth. And when you listen to something like that, you know, how can you dispute with it? Right. And you'd be more inclined to do it for the sake of God than for the sake of the individual. Because we're told that you know, all of us have imperfections, and that the imperfect eye always sees imperfection. And if we see the person, and if he has nine qualities, you know, behold, the, and one good quality, look at the good and forget the nine, mm -hmm. then we are likely to appreciate that person for the sake of God, rather than for his sake or my sake. What a beautiful way of looking at life. If only everyone could see that everything, it, it does exist in that beautiful perfection. We'll be right back after a quick message. Thank you. There is only one God. There is basic unity among the teachings of all religions. Mankind is one family, the human race. All forms of prejudice must be eliminated. These principles of the Baha'i faith were revealed over a century ago by Baha'u'llah, the messenger of God for this age. Hello and welcome back to The Spiritual Revolution with our guests Sylvester Scott and Jody Arsenault. We've been talking about prejudice and as we're talking about interracial relationships and, and the equality and the unity of all racial races, it brings to mind how in, 18, in the 1840s women were not allowed to show their face without a veil. And in the Baha'i faith we have a great heroine who ripped off a veil in a public place and it was the most unheard of thing that people were astounded and bewildered and she of course was martyred and in a very cruel way but she stood up for something based on the fact that we are taught that this is the reality from Baha'u'llah, from the Prophet of God. So here we have the same concept only it's as new to us in this day and age as perhaps the releasing of the veil was in the time of Baha'u'llah and Tahira, which was her name. What is the future now? If we can look into the future, what can we, we hope to see with this concept of racial equality? Well, the, the biggest and most wonderful thing is, is a unifying of, of groups of people who have isolated themselves from one another for centuries. Mm. Do you realize that if you take a large group of people together and you have a blueprint and some tools uh, in that group of people, you can probably accomplish just about anything. But uh, if they all agree to the blueprint. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, as Baha'is, of course, you know that we believe Baha'u'llah has brought the blueprint for world unity. If our ultimate goal is to unify the world, then we must unify everything within it. Not we, the Baha'is, but his teachings will bring about that unity because 
you're asked to be a thinking human being when you approach the Baha'i faith. You're not asked to blindly accept anything. It is rather out of knowledge that we embrace the truth of his teachings. It is out of knowledge that we get excited about the future of the human race and of the world that we're living in. So that when we look around us today and we see what seemingly is tragedy and, 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 and messy and hatred and, and crime rate is on the up and all this, it's a transitional period. We know and have faith that as the will of God is for us to get together in this age, that it's going to happen. So Hopefully. all of that is symptoms of an old, de decaying order, really. It, that's exactly what Baha'u'llah said. He said the old world order is in the state of crumble. We can keep putting band-aids on it, and we can prop it up with stakes. It's falling down. It's based on the wrong principles. It is the new world order of Baha'u'llah which we are trying to build, and that must be based on unity, unity in all things. But we have to break down these differences between us because it really hurts us. I thought of a very interesting uh, analogy. This is probably uh, uh, beneath the spirit of the conversation. But you think of somebody who uh, has lived in a very small town, perhaps in an isolated part of the country, and all they know is roast beef and potatoes. <laughs> then they move to a larger city and they discover Chinese food. Mm -hmm. Then they move to a larger city and they discover Japanese food and Thai food, and French food, and Spanish food, and Mexican food. Mm -hmm. And they say, my God, the richness with which I can treat one of my senses. And Baha'is, in many ways, look at the races of man in the same way. It's a tremendous variety and richness which provides a cultural diversity that we absolutely cherish, you know, that our highest loyalty is to mankind. Mm -hmm. You know, what just occurred to me as you were talking, John, is that what is so wonderful about the awareness that we gain as Baha'is, we don't think, we're not conscious of color. Mm -hmm. It's something we don't think about. Yeah. If we're asked about it, then we talk about it, as we're talking about it now. But how often it doesn't even occur to us when we're describing someone to mm -hmm. someone else, oh, they'll, they'll be at the bus station at such and such, how will I know her? Well, she's about medium height, it would never occur to you to say she's Chinese or she's black or she, oh, by the way, and then it suddenly <laughs> dawns on you, oh, you would notice such and such, you see. Just look for the sparkling eyes, that's how we'll find her. It's a, it's a, it's a total waste of time. Um, you know, I, I think it would be appalling if someone would take a, a study and do some research on, on the amount of energy, the amount of money, the yeah. amount of resources, and the amount of things that we do as humanity to propagate, you know, such a, a, a false you know, doctrine right. that you know, one race is, is better than the other and that kind of thing. And you, you, you take mankind, the highest form of creation, you know, that gets involved in such pettiness, and the lower animals don't get involved, you know, and they don't have the power of the intellect. But yet still, we, we, we do that. And it's something that's going to have to change in mankind to get us out of that particular, that unproductive mode. Because there is no profit into it. Yeah. You know, people talk about busing, the effects of it, you know. Uh, at one time or another, it's going to get back to you. We all have to be equitable, we have to be just, and we have to be consistent with the law of God. And the fact is that racial animosity or differences in division is not consistent and never has been consistent with the law of God. And until we begin to go along with that, then we'll continue to argue about, well, the amount of money that we spend for busing, the amount of uh, time our kids spend on the, the bus, or we can't get oil. Because at any point in time where any member of the human race, you know, whether it be black, white, red, green, or whatever, is affected you know, by racial animosity and prejudice, all of us should immediately and unitedly arise to put a, a cover on that. Mm -hmm. Because eventually all of us will be affected. So a person I don't think is justified in saying that, well, I was never the one you know, who, who voted against, you know, who, who uh, was for segregation. But yet still, if you weren't against it, you know, it was the same thing. So mm -hmm. you either heard or you're not. And you're either for or against because eventually there's no middle of, of the road and you will suffer the consequences of your own actions or yeah. inactivity. Jody, I see you burning. Oh, you I am. You know what? You know what? I think one of the big problems with mankind is that we think we can legislate everything. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. We're going to legislate non-prejudice. We're going to pass a law that says you have to love everybody no matter what their color is. Oh. You know how much hate would, would arise from a law that said, I have to love somebody? Mm -hmm. Most of us would puff up and say, oh, well, I'm not going to be told who I'm going to love, and just for that, I'm going to hate more. Rebellion. It has to happen <laughs> from within. 
The other thing that came to mind when you were talking, and that was some beautiful thoughts, was that God has given us vision and sight as a gift. And how disappointing it must be to God that we would take such a precious gift as sight, mm -hmm. as vision, and use it to, to, to separate destroy. and destroy the unity that he has sought to give us through the prophets of God. Yeah, that's a beautiful thought. It's very interesting, but again, we have the, the idea of all these groups saying that it's better to be American, it's better to be French, it's better to be black, it's better to be Chinese, and we're sort of giving them a claim right now that may not be very easily understood or readily or popular. acceptable or popular. And yet we're saying we seem to have this blueprint that's been dropped, in a sense. And uh, we're at a point where we would like to follow it. And in the Baha'i world, we are following it. And we're that's citizens so of the world. That is our loyalty. And the fact is that you know, it is happening. Right. And um, uh, there's nobody who can stop it you know, at this particular it's point. It's inevitable. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. For more information about the Baha'i Faith, please write the Baha'i National Center, Wilmette, Illinois, 60091, or check your local telephone book under Baha'i. Welcome back. We have time for just one closing thought. Just a quote from Baha'u'llah. He says, Ye dwell in one world, and have been created through the operation of one will. Blessed is he who mingleth with all men in a spirit of utmost kindliness and love. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, and thank you for joining us in the spiritual revolution. And thank you.